Your eyes are the first thing that people see when they look at you, so I think that it's important to kind of put your best features forward. I've wanted this procedure for about three years. I have never had any other cosmetic procedures. I was a little nervous coming into it, but now I'm very much excited to see the results. I'm Jasmine, and I am doing an upper eyelid blepharoplasty. surgery and I'm a little nervous but mostly I'm excited. I'm excited to see Dr. Devkin and the team tomorrow and I'm even more excited to see the results. I've wanted this procedure for about three years so I've done a lot of research and I'm very excited to be here today. So when I began my research um, I usually kind of search doctors that are affiliated with Lenox Hill Hospital and then as kind of my search went on, I saw that she is the number one plastic surgeon in New York. This is actually one of her signature procedures. And then, then I started following her on Instagram and just completely feel comfortable with the surgery going forward today. I'm Dr. Lara Devkin, and I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in New York City. The focus of my practice is cosmetic surgery of the face, breast, and body, including minimally invasive procedures like injectables and skincare treatments. A blepharoplasty is basically cosmetic eyelid surgery. Upper eyelid blepharoplasty can either be done under local anesthesia where the patient is awake but they don't feel anything. The reason that people seek blepharoplasty is um, usually because of cosmetic and functional concerns. So you have droopy skin, hooding of the lid, puffiness, bags under the eyes, asymmetry, contour abnormalities. And if you can do a short and safe and minimally invasive procedure to brighten the eyes, make them look less tired and a little bit more alert, then that's what we get when we have a blepharoplasty. For my patient today, Jasmine, she has some baseline congenital asymmetry of her right and left eyelids. With more hooding and excess skin and a smaller ocular aperture or eye opening on one side. So with something like that, there's only so much you can do with makeup tricks and surgery becomes the best option. Um, we're going to um, do a little bit of work to help improve the symmetry and contour of your eyelids. No one's actually brought it to my attention that there's more skin on my right eye no than my left eye, but I have always noticed it and, you know, just like leading Can with you your face that? and like putting your best features forward really kind of made me think more about the surgery and moving forward as soon as I could. Jasmine is a beautiful 29-year-old woman who has very nice facial features and gorgeous eyes. I am actually not very concerned that it'll affect my ethnic background. I feel comfortable today moving forward with the surgery. She wants more symmetry of her eyelids, and so my approach today is going to be to do an upper eyelid blepharoplasty surgery where we focus on symmetrization of her eyes. Jasmine is a great candidate for this surgery because she's healthy, she has a clear idea of her goals from the surgery, and she has functional anatomic considerations that I can fix. I think the art to blepharoplasty is maintaining the natural character of your eyes so that you still look like the same person. So we're not going to over-resect the tissue, it's going to be pretty conservative. I'm going to bring down a little bit of the puffiness here, um, and then we'll bring down um, some of the heaviness um, on this side a little bit more than that side so that you can have a better um, lid lift. I'm not concerned um, looking too Western um, and losing my Filipino ethnicity of my eyes. I've done my research and I feel more comfortable. Dr. Devkin works on so many ethnic patients and definitely emphasizes that they will keep your um, ethnic kind of intricacies um, of your eyes. The key to a really nice upper eyelid blepharoplasty result is maintaining the natural character of a person's eyes. With a lot of respect for the patient's anatomy, we carefully mark and discuss an intended surgical result. So the way I'm able to help carry that out is by being conservative and very meticulous in my approach. What patients can expect from blepharoplasty for the upper lids is a surgery that takes about 30 minutes. It can be done either under local anesthesia or asleep under sedation. After surgery, Jasmine is going to look just like Jasmine. 
Um, and by that I mean that she's going to look like an optimized version of herself. We're just going to be making the left and right eye appear more in balance and more symmetrical. So now we obtain hemostasis, which is using this electrocautery device. Most patients who have this surgery don't need to take any narcotic pain medicine. They're fine with ice packs, Tylenol, and eye drops. Full wound healing does take a full calendar year, and that's just the nature of how the body replaces immature with mature collagen, almost like replacing a brick wall, one brick at a time, until it's a completely different wall. I think the difference between a good outcome and an excellent outcome is all in the millimeters. You want to make sure that you choose a surgeon who really respects facial anatomy and who is going to spend a lot of time making sure that you have a meticulous millimeter level result. I completely trust you, so oh. that's why I'm so comfortable. Good, thank you. I, I take that very seriously. I do feel like it's my decision and I, you know, when people look at you they might see someone completely different, um, but you look at yourself every day. So, you know, if something about you um, kind of bothers you, you know, that you kind of, it's your decision and that you want to kind of move forward with the surgical procedure. Can you block for me? Every patient's a little bit different, so every time I do this operation, it's a little bit different. Oh, thanks, Jesse. Just take a peek at what I've excised. Uh, I actually have exhibited some pictures of my surgical specimens like this, which is like, that's a sign of the times, right? The day after my surgery and I'm still a little bit swollen but as the swelling goes down I'm beginning to see the results slowly. I'm actually going to catch a flight to Paris tonight um, but because I'm still in recovery mode I'll be icing the entire flight and when I get back to my hotel um, I also have to be careful not to overexert myself and just make sure that I'm resting. It's been 11 weeks since my eyelid surgery and I'm feeling really thrilled about the results. A few times, um, for the people who have known, they have made comments saying, wow, your eyes look really great and I'm like so thankful that they've noticed because, you know, I see a difference. So it's nice to hear, you know, other people seeing the difference. Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Yes, How's everything you. going? Everything's good. Okay, I amazing. feel great and I can definitely see the results now. So. so the first few weeks I was a bit swollen, um, so I was definitely taking it easy. Um, I had taken a few days off work, kind of following the surgery, and then when I went back to work, um, still continued to kind of take it easy. Around five weeks, I was really itching to kind of get back to my routine, but I didn't kind of, I didn't want to overdo it. Um, so at about seven weeks is when I started, you know, working out and getting back to my routine and taking, you know, exercise classes. Seven weeks is kind of when I started seeing kind of the full results. Um, I wasn't swollen at all. My scars were fairly visible. Here I am, 11 weeks post-op and my one of my final appointments, so very exciting. <laughs> I'm wearing very little makeup right now. I would recommend this procedure to anyone kind of looking to make a minor change but still keeping kind of their facial, you know, look exactly the same. So it was a very subtle change, but to me it was a big difference.